and we're back. Welcome into the Back to 12 podcast. I am RC Maxfield. That is a guy that has a painting of himself up at the Jones. No cap. No cap, people. He won't say it, but I will. Larry Leon Jr., nice enough to hop on the pod before hopefully he goes to beat. I'll say it so he doesn't have to. I believe it's Idaloo tonight. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Beat the, beat the shit out of Idaloo. Um mm-hmm. I'm saying that, not him. He's going to give you the coach speak and everything because yeah. professionalism. Um, but on today's podcast, we will be talking about some ways that Texas Tech can beat UNT and how the hell did we get here. I did not think that we would have to be finding ways to beat UNT. I thought it would just be maybe not necessarily a given, but a given, I guess, um, is probably the best way to say it. So we'll discuss that. And also, what can Texas Tech do in this game against UNT to make you, the listener, the fan of Texas Tech, feel like this season isn't just lost already, right? Because we're two weeks in and negativity is at an all-time high mm. um, in Red Raider Nation, and rightfully so in some ways. But we'll discuss some positives and how maybe this game against UNT can get Texas Tech back on the proverbial track if you will. But before we do that, Lyle, how's it going? <clears throat> man, it's a blessing to get to get back on the podcast, man. Sorry. You know, we've been out in these streets. It's, it's my fault, not RC's. But um, just glad to get back on and talk some, some ball and, uh, you know, just get back, talk to my brother and get to hang out again. So, like I said at the bottom, man, I tell people don't panic. Calm down. Um, so, you know, you just kind of got to look at the history of Texas Tech. We're going to lose one we ain't supposed to. That's that's Texas Tech for you. Um, but we're also going to beat somebody we probably shouldn't either. Guarantee you that, Jack. And so uh, I think, like I said, we got to not panic. I think, you know, um, for a lot of people, you got to understand how college football is changing. I hear everybody talking about ACU. Every one of their cats was a D1 cat from somewhere. So it's not the ACU O like you cats think when we played. Um, yeah, there's not me's on their team anymore. Yeah, me's either. Shoot, because I'm well, the same boat. But, closer to me. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but them cats got, you know, when we played ACU, they're true D2 cats. Like, now people got to understand, like, there's nine players from Texas Tech on there. There's Arizona State. There's all kind of, um, like I said, I'm really close to Coach Patterson. Love him. One of my favorite people in the world. Um, and, and, like, I saw his recruiting board. I know who he has. So, I think. Everybody's got to understand the way college football is working now. Everybody has D1 athletes. I mean, it hurts as a high school coach. It hurts my high school kids. But everyone has D1 cats. Washington State is going to lose a lot of cats off their team next year to to power four schools. That's just – Hey, hey, the pack is back, Lyle. Don't you dare do that. And they're wrong. They might as well add Leveland to the uh, mix if that's what they're doing for the Pac-12. But Damn. um, Heard it here first. Leveland to the pack. uh, (laughs) What is that going to be like? Pack seven, I guess now. Yeah, they're adding anybody. They're gonna add five more people. I'm gonna tell the surrounding high schools I'd allude to join too. But um, <laughs> you know, Pack twelve needs to quit it. It's it's done deal. It's terrible. Uh, but hey, I didn't uh, think there would be so much trash talk about the Pack twelve. That's the first so five bad, minutes. man. Like that's so horrible. It's just like I just uh, feel like they just took a poll and like emailed every school in the country. If anybody is interested in coming to the and the Pac- first five that responded, yeah, just got in. <laughs> I feel like they had a rock paper scissor tournament for the winner. Like, damn, we're in paper. But um, you know, <laughs> back on track. Like, back on track. Be back on track, you know, but they're like Conference USA times two now. But, um, you know, I, I think that everybody's just got to understand the change of college football and the type of athletes different schools are getting. And so I saw an interview I thought was cool, and they just talk about schools like Washington State. They got a couple of dudes they probably shouldn't have, and I guarantee you they won't be there next year. So just understanding how it changes. And like I said, you could look at the history of Texas Tech. We're going to lose one game we shouldn't lose. And there's a couple speeches on YouTube from Mike Leach if y'all want to go back and check them out and re- reminisce on those games. Um, and then there's also games that we probably shouldn't have won that we did win. So I think that's kind of a part of Texas Tech's history. And and I don't think Washington State was a bad team. I think they'll surprise a lot of people. Do I think they're a playoff team? Absolutely not. But do I think Texas Tech is a playoff team? No. And so I think everybody's giving, you know, Coach McGuire, you know, hell 
But at the same time, like you look at Mike Leach, like we won seven to eight games every year almost. We had maybe two, three seasons where we exceeded that. But the majority of the time, we're an eight, seven win team. And he's done that every year he's been here. So I think everybody's got to kind of calm down, give him a chance. I remember this time last year, I was in, going off on people uh, at 12 o'clock because somebody likes to do Twitter spaces when I'm, um, you know, having a, a beverage. And sometimes I lash out. But, you know, I, I think, like I said, I you apologize calm for down. That. Don't I panic. Apologize. What do the young people say? Let them cook. I think that's what they say. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's yeah, like cooking. two years ago, Lyle, but that makes sense, yeah. You know, let them cook. Yeah. That's what the young folks say. So Let them cook. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I think some of the criticism on McGuire is justified. Um, I've talked about it this week in the sense of it's kind of the consequences of your own actions um, in a way in terms of um, not everything has to be hype. Right. Like there's a way to be real about a situation um, without being demeaning or, you know, demoralizing the confidence or lack thereof of the player. Um, and the perfect example is Micah Hudson. Um, we talk about him a little bit, but I, everybody's freaking out about Micah Hudson right now, Lyle. And I I truly believe if Joey McGuire would have chosen his words I don't want to say more carefully because if you believe in the kid, hype them up, right? Like that's what you're supposed to do, right? Like coaches are supposed to do that. But I think there's a time and a place in learning from times you've done that in the past where maybe it hasn't worked out, i.e. last year where, you know, hey, we're going to go through the Big 12 title. And that should be the expectation. And you can say that, but don't build as much hype around it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when he was asked at Big 12 Media Day, he said Micah Hudson was going to make an impact week one. Right. OK, cool. That's going to get the fan base excited. Rightfully so. First five star in program history. Wow. There's a kid named Ryan Williams at Alabama. He's the number two wide receiver in this past class. It goes Jabari Smith certified dog at Ohio State, arguably the best freshman wide receiver we've ever seen. Then you got Ryan Williams at Alabama. OK, he has three touchdowns this year. Does Ryan Williams. Micah Hudson, in terms of yards, has only one more yard then Ryan Williams has touchdowns. Now, again, comparisons are out the window and recruiting rankings don't mean anything once you're on the field. I get that. But I also understand the frustration of Texas Tech fans in the sense of the hype machine. And I don't I don't like it when I see people call Joey McGuire like a car salesman or anything like that. I really don't. But I also do understand it because, you know, this is a hot take right here, eight minutes in. I still think Joey McGuire is the guy. I really do. I think he's the right guy. Um, that said, I think that sometimes the way that he articulates his thoughts and points can be a little bit better in terms of expectations, right? Like, wow, you're not going to say everything you're saying in your locker room to your kids in the media, right? Like if a newspaper person comes up to you, you're not going to verbatim say exactly what you said to the kids in the locker room, right? Like, I think that that's kind of where we're at almost in a way. Um, in terms of the expectations. And that that's not to say that Texas Tech has not looked good on the field because of what Joey McGuire said. No, they've just been trashed because of coaching players, all of the above, right? Like that's that's a fact. But I also understand the frustration not seeing Micah. And by the way, Micah wouldn't be a savior either, right? Like Micah's not going to come in and play against Washington State and you're going to beat Washington State. That's not going to happen, right? But I think it's really the thing, Lyle, to me, and we were talking about this before I press record, like his comments saying, who are we supposed to take off the field? Well, if it's not working right now, why would you keep anyone on the field outside of Josh Kelly? Right. You know what I mean? Like at least try something. I don't know about you, Lyle, but I don't want Dre McCray being the lead blocker on a, a wide receiver screen. It just doesn't make much sense. I love Dre. I think we're a, uh, pro Dre podcast you've had your uh times of hating Dre last year but you've come I to love the good Dre. side he's yeah, actually yeah. like I said <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie and say I think he's a top notch yeah. but I think he has well, you've been critical of and him, I really like him and I think he exactly. can help and make a make some plays without a doubt yeah but I don't I, I think we could both agree he probably shouldn't be the lead blocker in a wide receiver screen right I, probably I can't, not. I can't lie though I'm, I'm different on that <clears throat> Mike Leach made me get out there in front of 230 pound uh, safeties in practice and go until I got blocked, which never happened. And I did it for weeks on end. But it doesn't look but, like that's being done. 
Right. But I'm just saying I'm, I'm different sure. in that aspect because I did it. I blocked the yeah. All-American. Now, it may have been for 0.5 seconds, but it was enough <laughs> to get my man by. Sure. Sure. <laughs> but that's not get, happening right now. You know, you but know I, I mean? think it's, it's you know, I'm with you on that. It's just body control. It's, it's stuff shown, but that's. You know, I, I think Juice is a great coach, so there's no shot at Juice. But I, it's just getting your body. It's finding ways. Um, and then also on top of that, they've got to do it. So Juice may be yeah. telling them, which I believe, and they may not just be getting it done. So I'm different on that. Like lead blocking stuff like that, to me, it comes down to mentality. I was 150 pounds and did it, and I saw Eric Morris. I love you, Emo. No shots either. But he's 5'6", 140, make the same yeah. blocks. Like, but, it, but that's the thing, yeah. though. Like if the personnel's not working – try something new. Right. right. And it, it just hadn't worked on those screens. And I know Kitley said like they're averaging seven yards or something like that on a screen. It's like, okay, but a team knows that eventually the team knows that it's coming and you have to do something else. Right. And I, again, I'm not saying Micah Hudson should be playing every snap because that's not the case. Your clear cut best wide receiver with unequivocal doubt is Josh Kelly. I would argue this. This might be a bold statement, so hopefully you're listening here about 11 minutes in. And if you are, like the video, hit that subscribe button. But I would say Josh Kelly and Taz Brooks neck and neck in terms of importance to your offense. No, no. I, I, I think that that literally could be said right now. Like Taj is fantastic. Um, you saw – in a way, I think Kitley just got away from the run game against Washington State. We'll transition to UNT here in just a second um, because they were down. It is what it is. But um, you saw Cam Dickey and Cameron Valdez. They actually looked pretty good. They averaged about six yards of carry in the first half. I told you he's my favorite. I mean, like, Taj is by far, but I really like Cam. Well, he really brings a different like spark, man. Yeah, he like really him. does. <clears throat> and so I think that, again, I, I'm talking to you, Lyle, as like a fan here almost in a way in the sense of like what I see and – you know, I get a lot of people in my mentions. I'm very happy about that. Like platforms big enough that people actually care about what the hell we have to say. Right. Like that's, that's awesome. Um, like everybody's just like, well, Kitley needs to do this. Kitley needs to do that. And Kitley needs to do that. Right. When you watch the game, what stands out to you in the sense of, okay, if Texas tech can change this, right. If they could change this, I think the <clears throat> offense would do maybe not exponentially better, but it would get them on track to do better in two or three other things? Uh, that's a two-part question for me. So okay. um, the first one, like I said, um, I'm a little different on uh, the aspect of getting Mike in. I love Micah. Do I think he should get some snaps? Absolutely. But like I said, a guy that's been at practice, seeing like I'm a big practice guy and being in the game, and being a head coach and being a part of coaching at different places, like how you practice is how you play. I'll stick by that. And that was Leach's rule. Leach, Leach set it up to the best person when it was me and Ed, Eddie B, Edward Brenton, we would fight for a spot. He said, whoever was the best in practice would get to play the entire game. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> it pushes in practice. And a lot of times, whoever did better in practice did better in the game. I knew if, you know, somebody like Crab was going to have five touchdowns or one. It's it practice. So seeing there and seeing guys that constantly do it every day, every day, um, I'm, I respect that because, like I said, I, I don't respect that they're just putting him in because he's a five star. Earn your spot. Sure. And I think that that that's what they're creating. Like, yes, you are a five star, but we live in a, in a world where it's just like well, you're a five star. So you get to play. And and you got you got Quakins who's got touchdowns and catches. You got Josh Kelly. You got Payday who's made catches. You got Dre like Dre's not playing. Um, you know, that much. And and I think there's a lot of guys that can make plays, but it comes down to, are you making the plays? That's, that's my whole thing is number one is you just got to make those plays. So um, can, can Kitley maybe um, call some um, better, better plays maybe, but those guys that I've seen Leach call three plays and I score 50 points. I mean, like, is it really the plays or is it really the, the kids in that aspect? So I think that's number one. Uh, number one, number two, I kind of feel like Kitley's in a box. We're trying to get, uh, you know, he's kind of changed it to get Taj these thousand yards to feature Taj mm -hmm. to get Taj. Well, that's not him. I, I said this year after year, let that man be who he's gonna be. If you get Mike Leach, you know we're gonna throw it sixty times. That's who Mike is. It's never gonna change. Now there's games like I said we're gonna score a lot of points, and there's games we probably could have ran out the clock. He's gonna throw it, and if we can't run out the clock throwing it, then we ain't gonna win. 
but I feel like he's kind of doing what everybody wants. You know, coach, I think coach wants him to run the ball more. That's not what he does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's a spread offense. Uh, Mike Leach, Cliff guy. You look at Cliff from the Cardinals, they threw it 60 times. I mean, he ain't there no more, obviously, but I mean, that's just Shout what to the commanders, doing. though. So, He's with JD you know, right now. You feel me? So I just think, you know, we you got to let him be like tech fans can't have the best of both worlds. You can't be yelling for this man to give it to Taj 50 times a game and then turn around the next week and be like, we're throwing screens and handing the ball a lot. Well, that's what you guys wanted. Like, make up your mind. It's an air raid or it's a, you know, I don't even know what type of offense it is now with the with the running and screen. But I mean, like I said, I just feel like fans don't understand the game. And so you guys, you know, you, you want to watch the game and say, dang, man, we should throw it more. Well, no crap. We should run it more. No crap, guys. Well, he should do this. No crap. And once again, like I said, you know, when I went on my rant last year, I challenge anybody, tell me how much film they watched this week. Anybody in your comments, hop on here and say, hey, man, I watched 20 hours worth of film. You didn't. You watched the game and you cut it off early because we lost. So you don't even know. So that's my biggest thing is just like I feel like he's in a box, but I feel like fans live in a fantasy world. Like we're not going to be an 11-win team every year. We're just not. Like – Maybe down the road, but we've never been – I don't know if we've ever won 11 games in a row or 10 games two years in a row. And you, maybe you know the stats. I don't think we've ever won 10 games in a row. Have we won nine games in a row twice? Yeah. How many times? I'll go look yeah. it up right now, but I know that that's happened at least once or twice. Listen to that. We've been playing since 1950. You said once or twice. So, people, I love y'all. I love Tech Tech more than anybody in these comments. Be real with yourselves, people. Be real with yourselves. That's all I'm saying. Let's see. I got it pulled up right now. You know, uh, I think down the road they can, though, with all the new facilities and stuff. But you you still got to give time, man. So, I mean, the best stretch in football program history. Okay. I mean, in, in modern history, like you're not going back to like, you know, when they were in the I really don't even know what the hell this stands for. The BIAA conference. I don't I don't know what that is. Um, oh, not man. even going to try and lie to you. Um, was from 2002 to 2010. Okay, can you Each tell me? Year, you won at least eight games, um, with nine sprinkled in there a few times, and then obviously 2008. Uh, How many nine win seasons, brother? What What year do you want me to go back to? Because I don't think it's fair uh, just, to go just from 2000. Just say from 2000 to 2000 onward. Okay, seasons. so 2002. So you got one. Okay. 2005, um, that's two. 2007, nine as well, that's three. 11 in 08, so that's four. And then the next year in 2009, you won nine games as well, and that's the last time. So from 2000, you've won, there's been five years. So in a quarter of a century, you've won basically 20% of the time, you've won nine plus games. So, like, that's what I'm saying. People I think expectations like, need to be, you they, know, like, realized, too. Like, I, 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 I just, I've always struggled with this, right, because I do think fans should want more, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you should yeah. always want more. You should always want to be Georgia, right? Like, you should always want to be them. The issue is this. Name me another Georgia. But here's, here's my there issue. Isn't one. Here's my issue, too, with that. Like, if y'all want to help so bad, when I pull up the Red Raider Club, uh, the Matador Club. Oh, no, this is name, turning to an infomercial. This is turning name, to an infomercial. No, listen to me. Look me in the face, you commenters. I love y'all. If y'all want to comment, put your money where that Matador is. We pay these kids 60000 sure. then we'll get whoever we want. But you cannot complain when you don't have, like, I just can't explain enough. Like, as a, head, as a high school coach, I get what I got. And I got the best kids in the nation. You better believe it. But – um, see, I, I pulled, who I pulled a I pulled a car salesman there, but, in, in your yeah, but no. you know you got what you got, so you got to understand. Like, yes, is there things you could do better? But at the end of the day, like I can only imagine, like looking back, what people said when they looked on Rivals and saw me with a do rag, uh, 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 a do rag, do rag, yes, with, with the, the headband, do-rag. and it said, "Oh no, it said oh. six foot." 140 pounds. I can only imagine oh, what the comments no. said when I go back. Who is this cat? What are we oh. doing? Mike Leach has lost it. Hold on. Hold on. I got you know what I'm saying? Keep, keep I'm talking because like, I'm going to look up your recruiting profile my kids at right now, have, sir. My kids at school have torn me up for four years here. They find it. Please tell me it's on there still. Please tell me. 
Hell yeah. It's on there. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is up. going on the screen right now. Put it up. Hell yeah. Is, is there comments still? Look at that. Oh, yeah, this is just terrible. Yeah, I understand the overlay is awful, face. but all that matters is this picture right there look in the middle. The is. overlay is terrible. Judge me if you want, people. I really don't care. Look at that. Bro, look how many stars I have. Zero. That is, I, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Well, no, you got you got two. Don't, don't, don't discredit yourself. Two? Yeah, yeah, you got two. What's the highest you can go up on Rivals rating? 5.3. I think, it, oh, I think it's like, I think six is perfect. Oh, they got me a 5.3? Okay, Rivals, I take back all the yeah, best. I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to bring you back down to earth real quick. I'm going to bring you back down to earth. 5.3 is pretty trash. It is. In their rate. <laughs> In their ranks, I'm. Uh, I'm bring, I, listen, I'll hype you up when you deserve it, Lyle. But I'll bring. I'll bring you back down. And and yes, for people that are watching, that is that is from a man that had no business, uh, none playing in college football, aka no. me, not Lyle, obviously. No, me, me, right? But I'll be that. I'll be that. Uh, you know, I'll be the armchair quarterback for the day. You no, know. I'm just saying, five point three. It's not good. I ain't gonna lie to you, brother. I mean. Yeah, I've seen some people in intramurals with a 5.3. Hey, let me tell you something. Whoever did these ratings, you got, Robin, you got let me tell you something, though. Whoever did this, if I find out who did it, when I see you, it's on site. Hands. No, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to um, tell you that right now. I, I'm going to put that picture. I, I'm telling you right now, Lyle, it's Like, hard. so you're not surprised. I'm putting that Lyle, or I'm Listen, putting that picture of you in every, the thumbnail. Every kid in this school that I work at got it. No, I'm putting it, the, dude, I'm I'm putting it in the thumbnail, brother. Yeah, I'm screensaver, so. It's Dude, good. I'm putting it in the thumbnail, and people are gonna love it. People are gonna, you know, it, it, people are gonna be like, "Yeah, yeah, let's roast them." And you know what? Why not? Do you yeah. feel like you were like Nelly or some shit? What was going on? There? I don't know. I, all I know is like I can only imagine the comments of the people when were I was. You rolling, were you rolling down, down, baby, low street in a Range Rover or what? Man, I don't know, brother. I don't know what, mm. what was going on at the time. Mm. Were the um, waves good at least though? No, I had I had braids. I had braids. Oh shit! Did you really? Yeah, I had braids. If you look up my track picture, it's got. Uh, if you look up my, I name couldn't see the braids in that one. Maybe I missed them. You gotta look up the track picture, man. It's got me with the braids, but that's for another day. But you know, my point is, like I said, you just you got a <laughs> roundabout way to get back to the point. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. At the end of the day, like I always tell you, bro, these kids got to perform, and like I said, that's why I couldn't be a college coach because I'm um, like I hear what everybody's saying. But you got to show me, man. Like, and 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 uh, like I said, you just got to show me. I, do I think that that dude's gonna be awesome? Do I think he deserves his five star? Absolutely. I have no hate, but I, I got to see it. It's just show me now, game. You know, and it's a different game at each level, and and I can't explain that to people. I tell people that all the time, and they get their feelings hurt. Like, it's it's a different level. Is the kid gonna be great? Heck yeah, he's gonna be great. Is he ready right now? No. It's a difference, and not to compare him to one of the best college receivers ever um in crab but it was just different i seen crab come and we knew when he told me he's gonna be here for two years and win the blitnikov and go to the nfl after day one of practice i said he ain't lying and he did it and he left so it's just a it's it's a different it's just a man it's just he'll get it but it no, I, I get it I, I i think too i i understand the frustration aspect of it i think the biggest thing from this story like that I take away from what you just said is the Kitley aspect of it. Cause I, I was talking about it over on the website. Um, and I was like, call me crazy, but I still think this team can win eight games. Like I, I really do. Jeez. I really think it's in front of them. Like, I think that they can do it. Will they do it? Hell if I know I'm not the one making the reads on the field and, you know, putting them in the proper position to succeed. I am the armchair quarterback, but mm -hmm. I think it's there right mm -hmm. to do it. I think the th biggest takeaway from what you just said outside of just that awful picture on your recruiting profile was um, the Kitley side of things. And it's him getting back to who he is. That doesn't mean totally get away from Taj Brooks. That does not mean that. I think my biggest issue with Kitley more than anything, again, and it's really been my biggest qualm with him the first, well, I guess it's the first two years, now his third year as the offensive coordinator. Use the middle of the field, man. Please just use it. Like I, I listen, I bitch moan and complain about wide receiver screens, but I understand what the point of them is. 
right? Like I, I, there is a time and a place for them. They're basically an extension of the run game. If you don't think your offensive line is going to hold up well, it creates space, yada, yada, yada. Like I, I understand the multiple reasons why you use them. At the same time, there is no easier throw in football for a quarterback than one where the wide receiver is coming across it, like coming across the field right where he can see him in his line of vision. Right. He did that though. What was the only pick of the game? Where is the ball thrown to? Well, that was on a slant. That was a terrible one. I'm talking more of this. If you're really gonna do this, run mesh. But I'm just saying, like in mesh, like what happens is as a receiver, they're taught to put their hands. So you gotta have receivers that's able to sure. get off. Number two, once they mesh together, you got to have enough time with the offensive line for them to get off the butt, come slap hands, switch hands. Then number two, you got to have guys that are able to know zone or man. If it's man and someone's following me, I keep running. If no one follows me, I sit in the hole. Sure. That's a lot. Find that pocket. Yeah. So, like, that's the thing. It's a lot that comes into that. You got to have an O-line that blocks. You have to have a quarterback that's able to sit back there, which be more that I believe in and be more we believe. All right. I think he can do that. Are your receivers able to get off of the um, pressure? Yeah. Like, you know, mesh is that people don't understand. Like, when we ran mesh, when Mike Leach ran mesh, we had Louis Vasquez, who has a Super Bowl, who was a a cat. We had um, before that, they had Manny Ramirez, they had Marlon Wynn, they had BC, Brandon Carter. Like, I don't think they have that same line. So, once again, I always tell y'all, like, y'all have to look at the O line. How much time is he being allowed? If he ran a slant and his arm got hit and we threw an interception on a slant, a slant takes two seconds. So you're telling me if we're struggling with throwing the slant, we got enough time for them guys to run, slap hands, decide whether they want to sit or keep running, sit down. Like it, it's it's a lot. But why that, not use the middle of the field though? But I'm saying they might, and he be more might not be seeing it. He might not have enough time with the O lineman to throw it in the middle. He, they might have caught a bunch of stuff in the middle. He's running out because he doesn't have time or missing the read or because like I said, I've seen I saw him throw it. I saw him run in the middle a couple times, but like I said, it comes down to what does the quarterback see? You can call every slant in the middle of the field. It don't mean B. Morton see it or B. Morton mm-hmm. feels comfortable there or the receiver doesn't get jammed up and never gets to the middle. So, times y'all say, there ain't nobody in the middle. The dude might be jammed up to the sideline. Me personally, have I've done that before where I was supposed to be in the middle of the field. I was on the opposing team sideline trying to get off. So, it, it takes – it's just a lot of work in pieces. It don't – like tonight. Out of lieu, they give us open field. Now, if we hit the open field person, if our receiver gets there, if our O line allows us to block to get there, is the question. You know what I'm saying? So I always tell you that, like, I hear what you're saying, but it's so much that goes into getting the ball to the middle of the field. Are they playing where you think it's open and it's a cover robber where someone comes in the middle of the field? Like, there's a lot of variables that. It just doesn't work like that. And I know you know more than the average person by far, but it just – there's no play where I can come watch film and say, you know, yes, I want to aim to get to the middle. That's where the opening is. But that doesn't mean it works or it doesn't mean that they get there. It's just a lot of aspects that go into to that. You know what I'm saying? So is it – yeah, yeah. It, it, is it – so do you think it's barren that can't read the middle of the field? Watched. I haven't watched enough to study to not say that, to okay. say that. But okay. I guess. I'm just saying as fans, we got to remember you have to see the whole field. We get into where we say, like you said, oh, the middle of the field should be open or be more missed that read. There's a lot that goes into his read. Sure. You know, there's a lot that goes into, you know, what he sees, what he doesn't see. Mm-hmm. So I think, like I said, as an offensive coordinator, um, play caller, me being an offensive guy calling plays, you get a lot of fault for kids that are not doing what they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, over my career, I've had parents that come complain. We watch three clips and they're out the office. Coach, I see. I, I know. We watch hours of film. I know it's there. I know your kid didn't make that play, which is okay. But I just think Kitley's always going to get the raw end of the stick. If B. Morton, like I said, threw that pick to the slant and got hit, it's still going to be a bad call by Kitley. Not that – we missed the block, you know, like on that play, if you go back and watch, B. Moore was trying to get it there is open, but he also had a wide open check down to his left. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, I think too, to me, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, hundred percent. And I mean, it's part of the coach's job, right? You're going to receive all the praise or you're going to get all the hate. That's just, yeah. that's part of the gig, right? Um, rightly or wrongly, uh, it just is what it is. I think the thing for me 
as a fan, right? Like as a just strictly a fan, the frustrating aspect of this is, and I'm not trying to say go reinvent the wheel or anything if you're Zach Kitley, but tying this back to UNT this week, I would feel better if I think I would be fooling myself if I said to you right now, like I expect Zach Kitley to use the middle of the field 40% of the time, right? Like that would be fool. I would be, that would be setting myself up to be upset later on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think the thing that bothers me the most about the inactivity there in the sense of outside the run game, because they do run between the tackles Mm -hmm. um, is the fact that it's not working on the outside. It's just not right. So my biggest gripe and the biggest thing that I want to see going into UNT and then moving forward is the creativity aspect of it. Like your job as an offensive coordinator, your job as a defensive coordinator is to make adjustments. Adjustments and creativity to me are kind of just one in the same, right? Because if you've got guys injured, you got to get creative, right? Like if your lead dogs aren't out there, like you're already at a disadvantage, right? So you got to creative in ways to be like, well, there's a reason this guy isn't starting, but what is he good at? And what could I put him in a position to succeed next to maybe this guy does a strength that is his weakness, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see on both sides of the ball. And I I feel like I'm picking on Kitley. The defense hadn't been good either. But I want to see that from that perspective of, okay, I think I'm more frustrated than anything. And again, offensive coordinators are going to kind of be dead set in their ways when things are working because – they should be. It's working. But I want to see the almost look in the mirror type moment. And I'm not saying this hasn't happened, but I want to see it from a results based. And right. again, part of that is Kitley. As you mentioned, part of it is the players. You, you can only call the play when you're Kitley at the end of the day. Right. Mm-hmm. But I want to see that look in the mirror type moment, that self-realization moment of like what I am currently doing is not working. I thought it was absolutely hysterical to me that Joey McGuire bought, brought up passing yards. Passing yards are cool, but passing yards are one of those things that is maybe one of the least indicative stats that you can have in terms of if your quarterback is good or not, right? Like Blake Bortles, Lyle, was top three in the NFL in passing yards. The Jaguars went three and 13. Mm-hmm. It's called garbage time, right? And um, also just like, hey, there's a play that happens where, you know, Inevitably, two or three times a year, there will be a play where the defense just has miscommunication. Lords know it's, it's happened at Texas Tech already a couple times this year. And that inflates your passing stats, right? Like it inflates it. And so to me, I think really the biggest thing I want to see from Texas Tech going into this UNT game, UNT game and beyond is more so the fact of, all right, this isn't working. Let's try and be creative. I'm not saying reinvent the wheel but I just don't want them to be dead set in their ways continuously over and over and over again. And truthfully, I think that that's what fans are most upset about from the Kitley perspective of, is he throwing a screen every play? No. But does it feel like it when they're not working the way that the offense should overall? It kind of does, right? Yeah. And that's just kind of where it's at. And, and I feel that, but, you know, my question of the best offensive minds in college football, right, we can name a couple of them. Have they ever changed? Sure. I mean, I, I think that I think that they've adjusted, right? Yeah, but I think that that's Gus the thing. Malzahn changing is still your doing, actual principles, no. Gus Malzahn is still doing the same thing he did when he won. The difference is Cam Newton's not back there. He ain't changed nothing. Chip Kelly hasn't changed nothing. What, Ke- what Chip Kelly changed was where he was at. That's what changed with Chip Kelly. Like, Mike Leach never changed. Dana Horison never changed. All these cats never changed. So, like, people got to understand – you got to that level for a reason. Mike Leach never changed. And Mike Leach won one game. He would never change running the mesh. He would not change what he does. So I, I get creativity and all that other stuff, but creativity also creates problems. I'll tell you a perfect example. Last night in our JV game, we tried to do a double reverse pass without practice. It ended up being a fumble for the other team. Like you, it, Creativity is cool, but how long does creativity take? You know, like I get what you're saying, but to create something new, how many days of practice does it take to perfect? And and for instance, if you're doing a new formation just because you like it, that may take you three days just to get the formation right. And if you do three plays within that new formation, you're perfecting three new plays in a new formation instead of getting better at what you do. 
So everybody's got to understand, like, this is what they do. They have to get better at what they do. When you change, and I know you're just talking about minor adjustments, tweaks. I get that. But people got to understand each tweak, each minor adjustment is something that the kids got to work on. So how can you get good at what you're supposed to be good at when you're adding this or you're adding this? Oh, let's add this to be creative. At the end of the day, you're working on 10 tweaks, 10 adjustments instead of getting better at what you do at the end of the day. So people just got to understand. I get that. But like I said, no one could play when Mike Leach didn't mesh 176 million times per game. Like it, it's, it's like I said, at the end of the day, what's the difference is is players like and, and they're going to get better and they're going to make mistakes. But like I said, I watched Washington State and I feel like one person caught the ball. Joshua Kelly. That's the only person I seen catch the ball. I feel like all night. Like and so guys got to make plays like it was the same way when we were there. But Crab would have 50 catches for whatever however many yards he had. So I just think at the end of the day, you have to stick to what you do. Here at Level End, yes, we make minor tweets, but we have to stick with what we do. If we get out there and try to do a formation, a trick play, that got to be practiced and it has to be perfected because if he Kitley goes out there and do a, does a double reverse pass and we fumble it, you're going to be going slam ham next podcast. Be out there throwing the- <laughs> but that's the thing, though. I, 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 I'm glad you brought this up. Like, when I say creativity, I mean more from a personnel perspective, right? Like, just don't be dead set in your ways of, like, again, I know I keep going back to Dre McCray lead blocking. I like Dre McCray. I just don't want him to be a lead blocker. Um, right. Can okay. he do it? Maybe, but he hasn't very well mm-hmm. anyway, right? And so mm-hmm. it's like, if you're going to do those things that you were talking about, and I agree, do the things that you do well, mm-hmm. Texas Tech hasn't done that so far, right? But the thing is, is you're telling me the best option for you to do something well that you are going to do in terms of screens. Screens are not going away, people, right. is to have right. a 5'8", 175-pound wide receiver on the outside. That's just you, – you cannot tell me in any world that is the best-case scenario you have. Right. I, I like I said I got it. I understand Leach. you did it. I understand, but it's different because it's not working. That right. is the thing, and they just continue. What what's that? What's the saying where it's like if you continuously do something over and over and over again and expect a different result? That's the definition of insanity. insanity. But yep, that's what they're but, doing. But I can show you clips of me getting knocked on my butt, and the one clip that we but listen. But we got the one clip. No, I can show you games where we played OU. Remember when OU was number five and we were number two? And I don't know who the safety was, but he came down and knocked me out four times. And on the fifth time, I finally got him, and we got Gandy Yard. But there's four previous plays where he got in a track stance, and he ran full speed. He called me to be word before he proceeded to knock me back further. And I saw my teammate as I flew backwards five yards. I looked over at Mike Leach, and I'm not going to repeat what he said, but the next time we called the same play. So I'm just saying you got to – I understand you say it's not working, but it's game too. Like – We've done this where we've gotten blasted, and Mike Leach made me sit out there. But game 10, dang it, when we play Michigan State and it's an All-American linebacker, I got him. So, like, you got to give I get you gotta give grace on game two. Like, it's game two. And Washington State is not sorry. Like, they have vengeance with Josh Kelly. It was Mike Leach Bowl. It's a, it is a lot that went into that game. No, that, that was honestly, you know? like, it sounds crazy. That was their Super Bowl on their home That's schedule. What that was I'm the saying, only yeah, power yeah. force get, opponent. I, I get it. I think it's just from the frustrating standpoint of you, you have all these weapons. And, again, this is not a shot at Dre. I feel like I am so fixated on that. There's other people, too, that just have but done this knows? poor job. And that's what I was about to get to. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was about to get to. Because I, I, if I'm bringing up the problem, I have to at least have, like, a theory of a solution, right? It's part of it. Um, why not put Jalen Conyers on the outside there? Why not put John Carlos Miller on the outside there? Like, use your tight at Mason Tharp, right? Like, yes, it would look like you were going to throw a screen. Teams already know you're going to throw the screen. That's fair. Like you might That's as well get a big ass body out there. The, the perfect example. I forgot what team did it in the NFL this week, but the, I, was it the Bucks? Maybe it was the Lions. No, it was the Lions. It was the Lions on Sunday Night Football. Mm-hmm. They put Pinay Sewell out at a wide receiver spot. That is arguably the best offensive lineman. In oh, the so game of football. So you're talking about personnel. I, I respect that's that. what okay. I'm saying. I respect that. Yeah, okay. I'm not okay. saying change your philosophy. That is gotcha, not gotcha. what I'm saying. Because gotcha, gotcha. if you're changing your philosophy now, you're not winning games. You're just not, right? It's not going to happen. But I'm saying go out there and put personnel that, like, teams already know you're going to run a screen. Okay. Why not put a bigger-ass body out there and a guy that could be more physical and win at the point of attack? 
can't, can't Why back, not do that? Can't back that one up. You you got that's, it, Jack. That's, that's what that's I'm saying, right? And so I, I want – you know what? I want Dre McCray out there on screens. But you know what I want him to do? I want him catch to catch them. <laughs> yeah, I want him to catch them because odds are the other team is not going to do a very good job of catching him. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't feel bad because I was in the same boat out there, lead yeah. blocking. So I don't feel bad for no but and, and then that's, all, that's Sunday, the biggest thing I want to say though. Mike would call us out. Yeah. But <laughs> that, um it's just personnel because I I, you, you can't change philosophy. That's right, not right. gonna happen. You're you're if you're changing philosophy going into game number three of the season, let's go home. Let's that's go true. home. It's it's done so. It's done so. You know, you're you're not gonna have a good time. But if you can you again, I just can't get over the fact, and again, well, I get it, you've been there. I I, I have this one play ingrained into my skull of Dre McCray lead blocking against Washington state. And I audibly on the live stream, the watch party that we did here on the channel, I literally let out what in the fuck are you doing? Like, because it was one of those deals where it's like Dre had no shot. I mean, he had no shot, but you knew the play was going there. Like you knew it. You knew it from the jump. As soon as they got going quick, and there was two wide receivers stacked up on the left side, I was did like, they, "Oh, they, I don't remember. Did they sub or were they already in?" No, no, they were going quick, and yes. and that's the thing too. Another thing, I'm gl- I'm glad you brought that point up. I want them to go fast, but not to their own detriment, right? And you look at when Texas Tech has gone fast this year, and by fast, I mean like turbo. It's okay to go fast because when you're going fast, you can still substitute in sometimes, right? right? But when you go turbo, there's no subs. You're just trying to keep that same defense out there with the same personnel you have. And it feels like it's almost been a detriment to Texas Tech, not going fast. I think they've actually played well when they've gone fast. But when they've gone turbo is when they've had these plays that have resulted in false starts or illegal use of hands to the face. That's that's undisciplined. Right there, like that's a testament to the players and the coaches. But how many? Sense of, but how many times? Once again, it goes back to how many times do they do that? Is is that what Kitley wants to do, or is that what McGuire wants to do? Because at the end of the day, either I, way, I, I don't I don't know who I'm bitching at when it comes to the coaching well, staff. No, I'm, just saying, it. I'm just saying when it goes back to the fans, it goes back to my number one point. Let him be what he's gonna be. Like if you're gonna go fast, if you're gonna go, t- that comes with it. Like I we used to have this conversation every year. You can't pick and choose. Like you can't have the man go super fast. And then when we get penalties, you're like, dang, we're getting penalties. Or dang, we throw all the time. Like you guys have to pick a side. You know what I'm saying? Pick a side, fans. Like, do you want the man to run the ball and throw screens? Or do you want him to go super fast to spread the ball and throw it? Like it's up to you guys, but y'all gotta pick one. Like, I can only imagine. I know he doesn't care, but I can only imagine going to read the comments one week. We gotta run the ball, and then you run the ball and throw screens and the next week. Like, we gotta pass. Like it, no, the had, switch up was crazy. Like I, I, I wish, I wish he would have ran more. But like, also see, at the same time, I get it. You were deaf. No, 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 no. This, this is the thing. Like, I wish he would have ran more. And I, I was critical of myself in thinking this too. I called myself out because I caught myself. I was like, I wish he would have ran the football more. But also, the game is telling him what he needs to do. The problem is, Tech was not executing, and that goes back to my point of personnel too. I didn't think the personnel was good enough. Again, I am an armchair, you know, quarterback. I don't give a shit. I, I think that's a good valid point. But that's where I was at more than anything because I get it. When you're down, whatever it was, 20, 27 to six or whatever, it's like, yeah, I'd love to run the football here too. I just can't. I yeah. can't do it. Like in, in good conscience. And I think, like I said, just being him and then also Taj, like when you build an offense around somebody and then they're not there you got to understand like that this was built around like you know he got paid a good amount like he knows that it's the offense is built around him so um you know I think that was another one too and I'm not making excuses is there things that they need to get better on heck yeah you know like without a doubt so I know everyone's think you're I do love kid um but is there things he can get better personnel I agree he can probably do some better personnel could he have caused some better plays absolutely you know, but I just like I said, I just it just has to be, in my opinion, uh, uh, I won't even say 50 50. You could blame 60 on kit, 40 on the players. But like I said, I, I, I'm just a big advocate of I seen Mike Leach caught four plays and we win 11 games. Like I seen it live. You know, the difference was Crab, Graham, uh, Danny Amendola, Emo, Shannon Woods, Baron Batch, Louis Vasquez, Brandon Carter, Marlon Wynn. Like, it, it, like, 
we don't have those. Are they building to get it? Yes. And I agree. Should he not pump it up? Probably not as much. Uh, but, you know, I'm also like being in this position, too. It's it's you hear a lot of negative. It's not a lot of positive in this position. So you have to be your own fans. You have to, you know, like me, I go and like the kids tell me all the time. They listen like me and Dre are cool. But Dre heard what I said on the podcast. As he should. And, Good and, for him. You know what I'm saying? And he knows it's all out of love. But I'm just saying in that role, you have to be your own fan. Like I say that all the time. You have to be your Absolutely. biggest fan because I've had so many recruits that I hosted that landed down and was like, yo, I'm getting back on the plane and I'm going home. So, like, they got to – you have to pump it up in order to, to get the love that you feel you receive. So, um, like I said, I think there's a lot of things that they got to do better. But, like I said, I think – Tech's Tech fans are the kings of going straight to coaches. And I think it's like, does so it The players have been, I mean, I, I know they listen too. They've been butt cheeks yeah. the first two weeks. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, and, and, outside and you know, of the so, first half, they've been butt cheeks. And I just wish, like, you know, I just feel bad sometimes as play because I've been in that role where you call for every yeah. place. If anybody wants to come watch some here with me at Level Lane, you're more than welcome. I'll cut on the film and show you some great plays that didn't work out. So I just think it's a lot of that, like, once again, it goes back to the same situation. If kids make plays, if you throw that screen and Dre McCray makes that block and we do score, we're not having this conversation. So, like, it's – I'm just different in that aspect because it just takes, you know, first time they threw me a fade, I'm sure people are like, why would you throw a 6'2", 150 guy the ball with the do-rag and a pimple on his face? Did you just give yourself an extra inch there on the height? I saw uh, rivals – Put me at six two. I'm I'm no, five no, eleven. I'm, I'm gonna go double check that. I'm five eleven according to the. Uh, continue NFL. with your point, but if they if they put you at six two, no, no, no I'm talking about my height, fool. I know. Yeah, Are you six two? two? No, I'm five eleven according to the NFL. Five eleven and three fours. Man, rivals was juicing them numbers. Juice me. Hey, that's why you were a two star. If you were five you know eleven, you get no star. You know, that, real, quick, real quick, real quick, real <laughs> quick. Yeah, yeah, real quick, man. I'm telling you right now. You I'm know, you right now. But I just feel like, like I just <laughs> always feel like that. Like first time they threw me the ball, I'm sure everybody was like, "What is this dude doing?" You know, year four, they're like, "Oh man, why did he not get the ball?" Like, so I just feel like it's all perspective of those kids. Like, you're never gonna call. Like, I hope people realize it's a guessing game. Yes, you study film, but at the end of the day, it's a guessing game between the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. And if you watch it, like I said, um, you know, prime example in Patty. There's a lot of guessing games you can do. It doesn't stop him from running around, diving on the ground, throwing his sidearm 50 yards down the field. So, like, there's variables and aspects to the game that I just wish fans at Texas Tech would look at and then come back. Like, you, you came back with a very uh, uh, great point. Hey, personnel, they can, that's fair. But when I see somebody say throw the ball more or, you know, well, throw it here. How are you going to get it to them? What's the concept? Do you know yes, what they're running the, on the defensive what's side? What's the yeah. coverage? What's the, yeah. you know, because I know, like, and there's times I got here and it's like, man, I got the game plan of the world. And they get out there and do everything opposite than what I watch film on. And you have to, on the top of your head, which that's what you get paid for, you better make it happen. But like I said, man, I just, I see opportunities out there that I feel like we're not taking advantage of, whether it be, quarterbacks receivers line whatever the case may be it's not connecting so i just feel like that's you know as players i feel like that's the difference is as players we looked in the mirror like mike didn't have to tell us we was you know not say our players don't do that but i just think it's just like like i said crab would not let me or or emo wouldn't let me miss a block if i missed a block before i got back to that sideline i'd hear eric moore's mouth danny's mouth crab's mouth like I'd rather hear Mike's mouth than their mouth. Like that's that's the, you know. So yeah. I think those players got to take accountability. And like I said, the O line they gave up one sack, and I wish you could have been there when they gave up the one sack against OU, the number five team in the country, a first round draft pick. They're yelling at each other. I'm looking like, bro, y'all have given up one sack all year, and y'all in here acting like y'all sack every play. So I think they just kind of got to band together as a team. Um, those players and, and does Kitley need to make some adjustments? Yes. Does DeRuiter? Yes. But those kids have got to know um, and they've got to make plays and find a way um, when they can, you know, but they, like I agree about putting them in better situations, but I, I'd be danged if I have to hear, especially coach Morris's mouth. Cause we're playing, playing North Texas. We, I knew he was going to be a coach. Cause let me miss a block. Like, like I said, I seen a 240, 230 linebacker safety, whatever he was, take me, five yards back, and when I got up, I thought Eric was there to help me up. No, 
He was there to give me the business and let me know how bad, <laughs> how embarrassing it was, and it is on TV. So I, I think it's going to come, though, just giving them time. But I think some of those guys got to step up, especially, you know, um, um, Josh. They got to help them out, man. Yeah. And on the defensive side, too. We haven't even talked about that. We don't really have to get into it. I think we've harped enough on it. Defense has just been bad. I mean, they've just been bad. It's pretty simple. Um, you think they've been super bad, or you think that we've played some No, that's offense? disrespectful to the movie Super Bad. I like that movie. Um, so I don't want to call this defense super bad. I would add an expletive um, in front of bad to oh, describe wow. them. Um, I mean, they've literally been the second worst defense in college football this year. That's that's stats. I, numbers don't lie, people. Um, but yeah, I, I will say this too. I know I've harped on Kitley quite a bit. I think one of the things that I'm most encouraged about this year that he has changed a little bit is the motion side of things. He's using motion a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish he would actually throw to those guys in motion. He did a little bit in game number one with Jalen Conyers. Um, but I wish that he would almost use that as a leverage point because Tech has struggled to get off the line in terms of press coverage. When you send it, kind of use what the Miami Dolphins do. I know they're not Tyreek, mm-hmm. and not everybody's Jalen Waddle, but you can accelerate, right? Like keep moving, keep moving, and then as soon as it's hut, snap up field, right? True. So use those kind of things. Um, and I'm not saying every play, but that's where the creativity aspect comes. And see, from. I'm not trying to cut you, but I don't want to forget this point. My thing is this too: um, Did Deruder change his defense from last year? This year, or is he running the same defense? No, I mean, they, they're running the same defense. A lot of injuries, right. sadly, so but a lot of injuries. What's the difference? Oh, they're definitely missing guys. You know, they yeah, lost so Bradford that, and they lost Hutchins. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, Kitley's, like we give Kitley all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, people do the same thing. TCU, Gary Patterson was awesome. The year that they weren't good, they ran the same defense. The difference was there's cats. And, like, I, I, I can't say that enough. Like, you know, if you want to go back and talk about recruiting and they missed on some guys, I'm with it. And, like, is there adjustments in the pack? I'm with it, maybe missing. But it comes down to those guys. We do the same offense. Like, to, I argue with people all the time. Crabtree had 22 touchdowns. We ran the same offense. If every if the offense was that good, everybody or somebody every year would have 22 touchdowns. We haven't had anyone in this system have over 19 touchdowns since since him. Hmm. You was, know that like a, was that like a humble brag on your part? It was. Okay, nice. I did. I, I gotta did. call you out when it happens. I did. I did. Just being honest, I, I know I was right in the middle of your point, but I'm gonna call you out. You know, yeah, I, I saw it. I saw it. You know, I'm trying, it. Yeah, I'm trying to open up more to the people, but no, yeah, I get you it. Know, I, get it. I, get I, it. Did, I just think honestly, like systems, like would he, would I have ever scored that many anywhere else? Heck no. But there ain't a lot of people that scored that much in the system too. So they go hand in hand. I just that's like probably my biggest of all argument. People got to understand is they go hand in hand, man. Like you got to have the cats too. So. Does DeRuder make, need to make adjustments? Yes. But he ran the same defense last year, and everybody was like, oh, he's da, – da, da, da. but you had Tyree right last year or was it two years ago? It was Tyree two last years ago. year? Two years ago. Well, that – you know, you had Tyree. You had different type cats. So, I mean, at the end of the day, these cats have got to step up. I know they have injuries, and I know um, this, that, and the other. But, like I said, man, I I love those cats. I support them. But at the end of the day – I went to school and got a thousand dollars a month. So uh, these jokers is getting twenty five thousand plus. I can only imagine what I would have done getting paid thirty thousand. You would have saw me throwing my body everywhere, brother. But for one thousand, wasn't able to do that because you know it's just not enough. You know we got one meal a day. These cats is getting three meals a day. Shakes. You know they gave us a muscle milk this big and said I can only have one. What, what's that? What am I gonna do with that? So, you know, I topped out at 165, got there at 160, left at 165, you know. So it's yeah, uh you know within you in college, but that was because of beer. Well, mom, I hope you're not listening. Uh, but you know, it didn't work for me. It's not mm. that I didn't you didn't give it a try though, right? Yeah, yeah it's just weight definitely purposes. didn't give it a try. Definitely only for didn't. weight purposes only, mom. Yeah, uh, 100%. Yeah, that weight. beer weight is that's good athletic weight right there, hundred percent. And that's all that I could try to do, Mama, was for the family to try to get rich. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, no. Might as well have a good time doing it, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Should at least, yeah. at least try it out. <laughs> uh, you know, the good old yeah. college try, like they say, right? Uh, yeah. Texas Tech favored by nine and a half in this game. Lyle, total. You taking it? Under, set, set it over 69 and a half, a nice 69 and a half, I might add. Are you taking it? What you got? Oh, yeah, I'll take the nine plus. Um, uh, oh, on UNT. 
Do you what? think it's going to be a close game? No. Oh, you said the plus nine. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're taking nine and a half Texas Tech. But, you know, deep down in my heart, I am rooting for Emo not to win. All right. But well, we lost connection emo. with Lyle here. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm, that you – no, know, you're buffering, sir. I don't understand. Yeah, you love hey, a man, lot that's of robot brother, stuff man. I, over there. I'm rooting yeah, for him uh, to not win, great. but I want it to be close, bro. Uh, I don't want wow, my dog Lyle. to be Oh, gosh. Whoa. Man, sound like a robot right now. <laughs> Mm, hey, man. I, gotta, I don't I gotta think win. now is the time and the place to root for somebody else, Lyle. The Red Raiders need all the <laughs> all the hope and all the luck they can get. Um, but, hey, yes, see, I am taking it. This is how you be doing me on the podcast. I said I root for Tech Tech. I just don't want my boy to get blown out. Do you know how? Well, I don't give I, I, Respectfully, if Eric Morris sees this, respectfully, sir, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Email. Um, you know, even though the, even though you yeah, yelled at you, me in 2008, I'm over yeah. it, and I and I hope you're close, man. You seem like oh, a great right. dude. Lyle has great things to say about you. So does everybody else. <laughs> Respectfully, I don't give a damn on Saturday. Um, that I've got Texas Tech winning and covering. Yes, uh, I have them winning 44 30. 44 to 30. 44 to 30. 44 points. Yes, I think 44. I, be, I believe, I believe in, uh, I don't know what I believe in, but I believe in something. And, um, 44? Yeah. I'm, I'll let you know, though, when I figure out what exactly I'm believing in. Oh, I believe, I'm, let me say this because you be trying to do me in front of all these folks. But, this believe, is a you issue. This is a you I, issue. I, I believe mean, in I'm Texas just pointing Tech. out the obvious. No, not 45 points, but I do believe in Texas Tech. They're going to win eight games. I don't know. I thought I heard you through that robotic state say, I hope you and T wins. No, I hope okay. they stay close. Oh, oh, stay is that close. what they was said? Okay, sorry. yeah, it, nah, you know, the I, communication aspect was yeah. breaking up. Maybe it was nah. spotty Wi Fi on your end or something. North Texas didn't pay for my scholarship, brother. I mean, but I, I just I, I think it was connection it, on your end, though. Even my fellow, fellow brother, <laughs> man, I just can't see him come home and get sent out like that, bro. Mm. I can't, I can, him. and I hope he does. Listen, I'm totally yeah, honest I, with you. Emo, Emo, appreciate you. You're bro, really I'm, I'm good with Great 21 college. points, bro. I just don't want it to be like 50 0, bro. I, I need my man to stay in. Number one, mm. well, that's my brother. I, I'm going to go out on a limb, Lyle. You ain't got to worry about 50 or nothing. <laughs> hey, number two, I got some cats. I'm trying to get them to recruit, okay? So I need them to stay where he at, man. That's all I love. I'm, I, for, I, for I, the kids. I, for the kids. Again, again, I'm just saying, I don't think he got to worry about 50 nothing. You don't bro. think so? I, brother, if I, they score I, 44 I, points, they're going to beat him by quite a bit. We shall see. He's Lyle. I'm RC. I'm glad Lyle decided to take off the do rag and the sweatband for this uh, podcast. I need uh, a haircut. Really appreciate it. Um, mm. You know, I'm glad he finally got and decided. Hey, it's 2024. Here we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But two, but two stars, two stars, more than you thought. Yeah. More than you thought. Hey, rivals. I'm not gonna say what I got to say if I see you at some site. I don't know who did that. I'm gonna say this too. I'm I'm gonna say this. You gotta stop lying about the high internet. Ain't no way. I looked it up. The guy is right here saying he's 5'11. Everywhere I looked, it was 6'1, 6'2. And I'm all for a good boosting up. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, boost those stats up. Get those numbers up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the least they could do. They gave me two stars. But this is just let me let me did throw you a see the picture though. Let me throw a disclaimer. I don't I'll be honest I, with you. I wanna, I want to throw this out there before we get off this podcast. I was mm-hmm. Allstate, me and Desmond Bryant, mm-hmm. only two people, yeah. who he was a five-star and they gave me two. I'm not saying I'm a five-star, but yeah. rivals, y'all could have gave me three. The two people's mm-hmm. Allstate, me and Des Bryant, could have gave mm-hmm. me three. Just want to mm-hmm. throw that out there. Just want to throw that out there, man. Rivals mm-hmm. giving Allstates two, two stars. That's what we're doing. I think there's yeah. some kind of hate there. Yeah, I didn't mean for this to turn into like a therapy session or anything, but here we are. Um yeah. It kind of did. I, I literally told Lyle before this too. Hey, we're just gonna go thirty minutes. It's about to be Where an are we hour. At? It's an hour. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Game day. Let's go level yeah. up. <laughs> Let's go. There we go. He's Lyle. I'm RC. Appreciate y'all tuning in. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. On our way to almost eleven thousand, I will be here tomorrow for a live watch party for UNT Texas Tech out in the eight oh six. Get your caffeine ready. For a different reason. No, you're not staying up late. Early kickoff. 11 a.m. Mm. We'll be live here on the channel. I will be at 1045 in the morning. 
My wife probably doesn't want to hear that, but here we are. Um, mm -hmm. Nature doing business. Again, Lyle, I'm RC. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Catch y'all next time, guys.